Hi, and welcome to Cat's Corner. This is episode four, Snow Day. I am Cat, your host, and welcome, friends. I hope you're having a great day. We're having a very interesting day down here in southern Louisiana. Possible snow. So my husband works at one of the universities in New Orleans, and he's a uh, what's it called an assessment coordinator or something. He keeps part of the school accredited, and he also teaches adjunct statistics. Statistics. The so basically they close school. And only emergency personnel are supposed to be there. So he got off today. And then we found out earlier, earlier today, um, I guess around lunchtime, that they decided to close on Wednesday too because it's still going to be really cold. And if we actually get the snow, then it'll most likely still be there. <clears throat> And by the way, this is January the 28th. So, yeah, this is actually the second time in a, within a week that we were forecasted to get snow. We were supposed to get snow again on Friday. That didn't happen. We just got some... I guess it's freezing rain. I don't know if it was freezing rain or sleet or it was a mix of rain and ice. That's all I pretty much know because we don't get it really down here, so I don't really pay attention to any of it. But yeah, so stupid us decided we were going to go out. Um, so Linus and I packed up and we went with Nate to work that morning to go visit my sister-in-law. So we dropped him off at work so we wouldn't have two vehicles across the lake. And on the way back, a normal 45 minute to an hour trip took us a little over two hours because we got stuck in traffic because they were closing like everything. And then of course stupid New Orleans do not know how to drive period and then put them on slightly icy slick roads there was a couple ice patches people were reporting and stuff so there was a lot of accidents yeah we weren't one of them thankfully we made it back to the house safe and sound and Linus only started to fuss once um it, but it was while he was sleeping and he never really woke up during the fussing match so I think that was <laughs> <clears throat> but it's been kind of icing, sleeting, something. Pretty much almost the whole day. I think it started around like 9 or 10 in the morning. So we're actually getting ice accumulation on the ground. And I think from the way it's looking, around 9 o'clock tonight we'll actually get real snow. So we've been debating on whether or not to allow Linus to stay awake to see the snow. Or hope that there'll be quite a bit left there on the ground in the morning when he wakes up and let him play in the morning. So we'll be discussing that as it gets closer to bedtime. <clears throat> All this up and down weather has also got my sinuses in a little tizzy, so hot toddies all around with bourbon. I put a lot of bourbon. So, uh, let's see, what else? Anything else interesting? Story time started back last week. If you're, you have a young child and you're able to get out in the mornings and go to your local library, there's always free story time. So, we're lucky enough that we're like almost right in the middle between two big cities and their local libraries are no more than 15 minutes away from our house. Plus we have one at, in our town. So I get to go to story time twice a week, which I couldn't make it three times a week. 
I think that's a little much. So Tuesdays and Thursdays I designated story time, which of course today being a Tuesday, snow. Yeah, the library's closed today and tomorrow. <coughs> so that was fun. Got to meet a new friend who I found out actually knits herself. She apparently just moved in from Missouri, I think it was, and was trying out the story time at our local library and got to talking with her and she actually knits. So hopefully that friendship will blossom. She has a one-year-old and Linus and her can play and the mommies can play. So. So if you hear any background noise, it's my husband and my son playing in the other room. We don't have very good insulation in, or yeah, insulation in the walls apparently. So you can kind of hear things. So if you do hear screaming, yelling, cutting up, it's my husband playing with my son. So I apologize if you do. You may find it interesting. I do want some podcasts that I listen to, all the fun interruptions. Um, I've also been debating um, where to go with the podcast. A lot of people try and make it a lot more formal and do tons of video editing and I don't think I'm really going to do much of that. So if you're one of those people who likes it very succinct and to the point and nice and professional, that's probably not going to be me. I'm a very, like, I'm very routine, but I don't really like, well, I shouldn't say I don't like to plan things. I love planning. I'll start planning things months and months in advance, but things like this, I just tend to, you know, this is me. And I'm not gonna, this is for me more than it is for you. So I hope you enjoy it though. But this is kind of like my, it's almost like a stress reliever for me. So, wherever the wind may take me, that's where it will take me. I will try and stay kind of on track, but I'm probably, I don't even understand half of this techno stuff anyways. So, if you think I would be growing up when computers start, first started coming into the home and everything. But... That was not my forte. So, unless someone teaches me how to do it, it probably is not going to happen. So, uh, let's see, anything else exciting? Got to spend time with my sister in law and my brother in laws and stuff. Got to see, Linus got to see his Grammy, which he doesn't get to see too often because she lives a little bit further down south. So, Weird saying that, further down south, when we're pretty far down south as it is. Yeah. I'm not used to, to me everything was always up. But now there are more things below me than there used to be. So now everybody's south. Um. Oh, yeah, and Linus went to his first birthday party over the weekend. His little friend turned two in December, shortly after Christmas. So her mom decided that there's just too much all at once, and so they postponed it. And last weekend, they had her birthday party. And it was princess themed, and almost all the guests there were little boys. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. If I had, I have a plan eventually to make Linus a night outfit, like knit or crochet. I think, I think the, one of the patterns I found was a knit one, but I haven't had a chance to make it yet. So if I had, it would have been awesome because she would have been, you know, it's a princess theme and make one of one as a knight. But it didn't happen. But anyways, so that was exciting. Next week, hopefully, I'll have pictures to show you of the snow. I can hear it going tinkle tinkle outside. So, I can show you the 
we get excited with just a little bit of ice, okay? Accumulation. Let's see if I can... You can see... No, really not. Ice on the car. That was the little ice we had around the tree. It was very, very exciting to see ice. And then on the patio table, in the chairs, oh, you can't see that, really. But there's ice on that. So, hopefully by the morning, we'll have more than what there is now, so we can actually play in it. My husband went and scraped as much ice off of my car as he could to make a little snowman. It's like a little dinky. It's like, I didn't get a picture of it yet. So I think that's pretty much it about the fun, exciting things in my life. Hope you're having an exciting day today. Are you getting snow? <laughs> snow in southern Louisiana. Okay, so we're going to hop right in to the whips. So, <clears throat> I finished a couple things last week. Um, and I was trying to find, what, did it, what was it? I think it was the fingerless mitts, right? I finished those last week? I think so. I think those, those were my quick, that was my quick bit from last week, was the, the fingerless mitts. So I was looking for something else quick to do, and my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant again. So, I figured, well, I need to start working on stuff now, because once I do get pregnant, I may not have enough time, oh man, it's getting dark outside, I can see, I've just started noticing the difference in the lighting, because <laughs> um, I'm not going to have time to get as much stuff as I want to done, so I started making a bunting for the hopefully future child that we will have. It took us almost five years to have Linus, so I'm hoping it doesn't take that long for the next one. I was already, but by the time I found out I was pregnant with Linus, I had resigned myself that, okay, let me just start looking into adoption. And then once I had that, I'm going to, Go look into adoption and stuff and I guess it was like a peace of mind that I you know okay I'm not gonna be stressed about trying anymore and then we found out if we were pregnant so hopefully my body's worked itself out whatever was going on in there to make it a lot slower progress I guess because I don't want to be too far apart I was hoping to already be pregnant by now and it ain't happened yet so but, I really need to get another project bag, apparently, because I've been stuffing everything in this one. The awesomeness of... I just realized that they're called Gastly's. I don't know what that is reference to. I just love the ladies. They're super awesome looking. <clears throat> By good to be girls. So I started on it. I got through a whole ball and then realized this looks really, really big because I'm not going off any pattern. I made two buntings a couple years ago when I found out I was pregnant with Linus and I used the pattern for that. And this year I'm just kind of winging it. If I if I'm remembering how to go about it with from the pattern, then that's, I don't know. But, so I realized I was making it too big. I had put too many increases. So I had to rip it all back out. Well, not all back out, but rip out a couple rows of increases. And I looked up about the average circumference of a baby's chest so I could figure out how big I needed to make the bunting. Cause I don't want it to be with Linus's, his, he outgrew his in like two weeks. 
and I want it to last a little bit longer than that. I don't want to spend all the time for two weeks. And you only get to wear them once. So, so I found out that the average circumference of a baby is about 19 inches. So I think I made the circumference of this, I think it's 22 inches. And it's going to have a good amount of stretch in it too. But, so this is how far I've gotten. It's nice, pretty, 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 pretty bright green. And that's, yeah, the light's going to be horrible. Let's see. Yeah, that's really washed out. It's, let's see. Let me find actual yarn and see it's um it's catnip barnet cotton tots bear baronet cotton tots and it's the catnip colorway it's almost it's like a yellowy green bright green color that's almost kind of like it. So, Nate had bought me all these yarns for to make Linus's, and I didn't use them all because I decided to do a bear and I made him a bear and a bunny. And so, I didn't, he didn't get me any brown, so I went and bought brown. And then for the bunny, I used the the creamy white color he got and then I needed a pink for the bunny's belly and ears and stuff so I had to go buy pink. So basically I think I think the only <clears throat> the only color I really used was the creamy white color and he bought me a green, a blue, an orange, and a white. And I'd made him a couple, I think I made him a little pair of um, knitted sandals. And I used some of the leftover brown from the bear. And I used some of the orange. I don't think I used the orange for anything else. <clears throat> but, so I have the green, the blue, and the orange left. So, that's the blue. That looks... It's kind of like a pretty bright blue. It's the, um, Sea Kiss. So, yeah, it kind of reminds you of the sea. That's, like, really... It's got a little bit of, like, a green... Like a blue with a tiny, I don't know, a tiny bit of a green color to it. So I have these two. Ooh, there. And then I have the orange, which that's really, they're like super, super bright colors. And this one is poppy. I'm putting it upside down. So, that's the color that it's going to be. And what I'm planning on doing, and I'm trying to write it down just in case I can... I've done it before. I've written down what I've done in the hopes of, okay, well, let me put it up somewhere or, you know, for people to use. And I've never done it. Because <laughs> that's another big step. Having people critique your work. That's what I'm ready for it. But I am trying to write down what I've done. If nothing else, so I'll have it so I can do it again if I want to. But what I'm planning on doing is working this up to, I have to, I have to see, I'm going to look back and see how long Linus was so I can, you know, subtract the head and figure out how long to make the bunting. But after I get to however I'm going to go, it's very difficult to hold, okay. However far I'm going to go, and then I'm going to start... I think I was going to start the orange next. I don't remember if I was going to do orange or blue. I think I was going to do orange next and then do blue. Or was it blue then orange? 
I don't remember. I didn't write it down either. I'll have to debate it again. But I'm going to do like a chevron pattern, but I'm not doing a chevron crocheted stitch. I'm just going to do like a chevron color work. Because I don't want it to be pointy at the end. I want it to be a nice flat. And then I don't want to have to figure out how to make go from the chevron stitch to a flat stitch, I guess is what you, I don't know, whatever. But, um... The size crochet hook I'm using is an H, which is a number 8 or 5 millimeter. So that's the first project. I started working on that, I guess, Wednesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I, I mean, if you can tell, I still have this ball left and I had basically used almost the entire thing of it. So I haven't gotten much work done since I ripped back all the way. Because I literally, I ripped back to like down to here. So, I had a busy week, I think. I was gone all day Friday. I think I was gone all day Thursday, too. And then my mom came over on Wednesday. So, yeah. I try and keep as busy as possible so I can keep Linus as active and interested as possible because he is one active little boy. And this cold weather and the rain and everything has been a major blow because he can't get outside and play and you get all some of that energy he has. So, I'm still pretty good progress. I'll have to mark where I am. Oh, and y'all like my stitch markers, huh? Pieces of yarn. Oh, I'll put that back in the bag later. So, my next project that I am work have been working on. <clears throat> I finished Nate's socks last week. He wore them. I washed them and blocked them. So, I was able to start on my socks with the yarn that I bought for me. I was going to do the Narcissa, Narcissi, yeah. I don't remember how to pronounce it. Yeah, that's another thing. I can't pronounce things correctly, like ever. So, <laughs> it, but that pattern was from the unofficial Harry Potter magazine. I think it's like the Knit Simple or Knit Scene or something like that. I don't remember exactly. I didn't bring it in here with me. So I was supposed to use that pattern. It's a cuff down pattern and when I did Nate socks I really liked the toe up because I was able to keep trying it on him and making sure it was fitting right. So I really wanted to continue to do that. So I started researching trying to figure out okay well how do you make a pattern from cuff down to toe up and I started getting very confused because I'm going to have to do more research. So I nixed that pattern for the yarn that I wanted to use and um, started looking for toe up patterns that were free on Ravelry and I came across one that I thought was really pretty. I am already started modifying it slightly because I didn't really like how it was starting to come out and I've ripped it out a bazillion times and yeah so I'm not ripping it out anymore but I came across the climbing lace socks by Tabitha's Heart it's a free pattern on Ravelry <clears throat> so What I'm using is Capistrano Fiber Arts Studio Hand Dyed Yarns by Laura Lawson. It's 100% Superwash Merino, approximately 160 yards, and it's color dial at 122 0. Uh, 
Okay, that is it's more like this part right there. It's got all those pretty, pretty colors in it. It's not a self striping yarn. It's what it looks like in a ball. I do not have a ball winder. So basically what I do is I sit with the skein with my feet outstretched, wrap the skein around it, and just slowly No, I think this time I didn't I didn't do it on my feet. I sat with my knees up and wrapped it around my knees because the skein wasn't super large. It wasn't like crazy, so and I just went around. Yeah. Then you get ball winder. Apparently. But so this is how far I've gotten. I've actually gotten a lot of work done on it today since my husband was home. And I've been throwing clothes in the wash machine, which I think the last one just buzzed like right before I decided to do this. So I have a huge pile of laundry to do after this. But let's see. It's this really cute little lace pattern. Let me see, maybe if I get this clean a little bit closer again. I was trying to not put it too close because then it washes everything out. But yeah, that looks better. It's a lot more yellowish, like in the yellow tones. It's just not working. When I started, it's, we still had light. And I'm still not used to the fact that it gets dark so quickly. That's kind of close. But it's a lot more kind of like on the rusty yellow tones and stuff. So it's got this. Let's see if I can stretch it out some so you can see the lace pattern. It's just kind of like this little climbing trellis type thing. Down the center. Well, mine's not down the center. I accidentally got one stitch off. I started it one stitch too early. And I didn't realize it until I was about halfway up here. And I was like, oh well. I've already ripped it out a bazillion times. I'm not ripping it out anymore. So, a um, couple things I've already changed on the pattern. And some things I'm going to change from this sock to the next sock. The pattern has you doing more of a triangle toe. So my toe looked kind of like that, like this big huge triangle wedge. And I tried it on, and I didn't like it. So I researched how to do more of a rounded toe. So that's one thing that I did. I cast on more stitches than what the pattern said. I cast on 10 stitches and started working the rounded toe. And it looks a lot better on my foot. Um, I increased to the number of stitches it said to increase. Now, on previous attempts at this sock, before I decided I wasn't going to rip it out anymore and I just stuck with this, um, I had gauge. I had the gauge. Um, I was one row off, but to me that one row off is not as in a sock is not as big of a deal to me as stitch wise and I had it I had the eight stitches per inch but it was too huge on my foot like I had like this extra gap so on some of my earlier attempts at the sock while I was still doing the triangle toe I ripped out to the, some of the last increases and I took out a row of the increase the second to last row of increases because on the first couple the majority of the increase rows you're increasing four two on the front two on the back and then on the last increase row you only increase one on the front and two on the back so that you can work the the lace pattern and it, so it'll work out with the lace pattern so I ripped back two increase rows so I took out one of the four increase rows and then I did the three increase row and I just left it at that and it seemed like it was working 
but it still felt a little big. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to try and knit tighter because I'm working these on my Addy Turbo Rocket size one. I don't want to go down to a zero. I really don't. So I'm trying to modify. So I got about, let's see if I can see. I think I got about up to here where you actually can like really start to feel how the sock is fitting. And it was still a little too big. But I wasn't going to rip it out again. I had already ripped down to increases once or twice, I don't remember. And then I ripped all the way out and restarted because I decided I didn't like the toe. And I didn't want to have to do it again because I was already starting to mess the yarn up. And I really like the yarn and I don't want to weaken it. So about right here, I did a single decrease on each side of the back. So it's a little big for like here down, it's a little big, but once I get to that increase part, it fits a lot better. So on the next sock, I'm going to try my best to remember to leave out one of those four increase rows. Apparently I have a skinny foot. I thought I had a, a wider foot for my size, but apparently I have a skinnier foot than the person who wrote the pattern. And I didn't even realize that they had gauge to start off with because I was going to check a gauge swatch since I paid a good amount of money for this yarn. And I was looking all through the downloaded pattern trying to find what the gauge was and I couldn't find it. So if you're working this sock and you're looking for the gauge, it's on the Ravelry links on when you before you downloaded the, the Ravelry, Ravelry page. That's where I found the gauge, after I'd already ripped out the whole sock. And realized I had the right gauge. So, unless I'm missing it, but I didn't see it anywhere in the download thing. So, um, if you know, know the person who wrote this pattern up, by some chance, and you're watching, you can let them know that it would be very appreciative if you they put the gauge actually in the downloaded pattern because I didn't think to go back to the other Ravelry site. So, but I love the pattern. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful pattern. I just had to do some fixes because apparently I have a skinny foot that I didn't think I had. But I'm glad that I'm doing a toe up pattern. And I can keep trying it on <laughs> and making sure it fits right. This is technically my second pair of socks, so I'm still learning socks. But I think I'm learning a good bit. I'm starting to figure out kind of, I guess, how my foot works with sock yarn and size one needles. But, uh, Okay, back to the pattern. <laughs> back to the socks, right? So I have started the heel increases. I found another sock pattern that I'm basing the heel and the toe off of. Um, let me see. It's... Um, Let's see. Let me go to there. I'm trying to see what it is so I can give them credit for the toe and the heel that I'm using. Even though I think they're using a different type of heel. I don't fully remember. Um, the, which I think it's also like theirs are um, like more like calf. Go like up the calf. So if I do need to go further up my foot, my leg, 
Man, my brain's not working anymore. It's getting late for me. Then I can hopefully figure out calf increases because I didn't even know those things existed until I watched, I think, a different podcast. I don't even know which one it was. But I think I was reading some sort of podcast or maybe a forum post or something and someone said something about calf increases for their socks. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, those things exist? Makes sense to me now, but I didn't know about it then. Um, but I'm, the toe and the heel that I'm using, it's from the toe up socks to fit anybody. By Bex Squared. And I think um, the heel that she used in it is the Fiegel heel? Flagel heel? If I'm pronouncing things super wrong, you know, feel free to tell me. I won't get offended. I know I don't talk very, very well to start off with. That goes from having a Cajun mom and a country dad. So. So, I think I'm about, I'm almost to the heel turn. Once I do the heel turn, I have a choice. The pattern has a lace pattern up each side along with the center lace pattern. I'm thinking just doing the center lace. I've already got it memorized. And it's going super quick. And the side lace panels, they didn't, I mean, they're really pretty, but they didn't really do anything for me. And I'm just really liking just the single, the single lace right down the middle. I think it's really pretty. And eventually I'll have better pictures and you can see the prettiness of the yarn. It's very pretty. I'm very sad that you can't see it very well. That's almost, almost good. It's more golden y. It's very pretty and soft. I'm really liking working with it. The only thing that I've been having a problem with is when I had to, um, they call tink back and pick up stitches whenever I was trying to do go back and do, get rid of some of the ink an increase row and trying to pick up those stitches I kept sticking my needle through the yarn and I've been having a little bit of problem with that too whenever I'm just going a little faster than normal so yeah I like it though, it's pretty. Can't wait to finish them. If I have another good day, like I did today, I'm hoping I can finish this sock. Maybe tomorrow? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but I'm, I want to finish these socks, I want to say by February, which I think is Saturday, right? I think it's Saturday. I think start February 1st is Saturday. But I'd like to. Um, one of the other podcasts that I listen to, um, Suburban Stitcher, she's doing a rainbow knit along. And my local yarn store, McNeedles, is having a BOGO sale Friday and Saturday. Buy two skeins, get one free. On Mostly going to be discontinued yarns, I think they said. Um, so I'm hoping to go and find like a rainbow inspired yarn so I can make something and join that knit along because I've never done a I've never done a knit along before, and I think it would be fun. So what I'm thinking is if I can find the right type of yarn. That's in the sale, because that's the reason why I'm going. I'm thinking I might make a hat for Linus and maybe some mittens. But I'll have to make it like maybe an extra, the next size up, because I'm thinking I might pick it up for him for Christmas, even though I have another hat that's just sitting <laughs> on the side because I made it too big for Christmas this next year. And I still need to. Finish it, finish it. 
And if you're wondering which one that one is, that one's, the, I think, like the square-eared monster hat or something like that. And basically, all I need to do is put on the eyes and the mouth. And then it's done. Maybe I'll do that next week. Or this, this coming week for a next show. And then I can say how a finished object. Because all I have to do is get the eyes and the mouth one. And then pick it up for him for Christmas. But I'm thinking of joining that knit along. So I would really like to finish these socks. By Saturday. Or even on Saturday. That would be fine. Oh no, I won't be able to finish them on Saturday. I'm going to be out of town all day Saturday. Okay. We're going across to like and playing board games all day. <laughs> I'm a major geek. And it'll be fun. Adult time. Linus. My mom has agreed to take Linus overnight. So, like, we can barely leave when the store closes at, like, midnight, if we so chose. That would be, what would that be, like, like, 11 hours of gaming? We used to do it. Maybe we can do it. But... Okay, I've been on works in progress for a while. <laughs> I have been so blabbering, I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, finished objects. Because I've been blabbing a lot. Okay, first finished objects. Nate sucks. And just letting you know, if you did buy the Lorna's laces and the bigger on the inside, it bleeds like majorly so if you're hand washing it make sure you don't have any other things that you're hand washing in the same sink or tub or wherever you hand wash your stuff because literally the water turned bright blue <laughs> when I was washing it but they are finished they look very 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 nice I am very pleased with them um, the second sock, like I was telling y'all, I had some wonkiness to it. They still fit them fine, but apparently I also made it like a half an inch to an inch too short because apparently I miscounted something or wrote something wrong on how I did the second sock. I don't know. So, you don't notice it unless you look into it. I'm sorry, I keep pulling my shirt up. The beads on these, this shirt is like super heavy. But... These are the Golly Socks. Um, they are by... Let me go to it. Boop, 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 boop. Just look at the pretty sock. By Nikki Miller. It is a free Ravelry download. Or pattern. And you have pretty trees with a little bar in between. The pattern's showing up really good right now. And you have this pretty little cape, faux cable type thing. And then this laddering on each side. I really liked it. I used Lorna's Laces um, Soulmate. Um, it was 90, 75. It was a super wash merino. I don't know which percentage. It was a high percentage. Um, and there was another something else and then like 30% Vicos I love these socks and you said that they felt really good so yay for first pair of socks I think so I technically made one other pair of socks like several years ago but those came out so wonky so I don't even count those those don't even exist. This is my first real pair of socks. Now, I needed to get sock blockers. So I had been looking into sock blockers. Since I made him his socks and I was going to make me some socks and I was really enjoying making the socks, so I wanted to make more socks. So then you kind of need sock blockers. So if you have any suggestions on sock blockers, greatly appreciate it. 
because I am looking, I am in the market to buy some. And these are my sock blockers right now. Homemade from Kurt Hangers. I told you I was cheap sometimes, right? Since I couldn't decide on what I wanted, and I needed something, I took some coat hangers and made my own. And they're kind of wonky. I don't even know how well they did blocking them, but it was what I did. Sock blocker suggestions are very much welcome. Yep. Because I need something. Okay. And on those, I think I've been saying that I was using my Addy Turbo Rockets in size 2 needles. C correction on that, they were size 1s. I apparently, I got confused because I was started with size 2s. Because my husband has a wider foot. So I was thinking if I used size 2s, that it would be better for him. And it wound up being too big, so then I went back down to the original needle size that they suggested which was size one and it worked so correction on all the previous podcasts size ones okay other completed finished object I cast these on yesterday finished them yesterday Linus was in a very um I'm just gonna sit here and read I'm gonna sit here and watch TV I just just want to sit. He didn't want to really get up and play too much. He was in a very calm, chillax mood, which was great because with the anticipation of snow, he owns no mittens. We live in southern Louisiana. It rarely gets, I mean, we get to freezing, but it's usually like late at night and he would be asleep anyway. So why does he need mittens? Well, if I wanted him to go outside and play in the snow, he needed to have some sort of mittens on his hand or else his hands would have been blue. So, I did a quick look up and search for some mittens on Ravelry for a free, I'm, I'm, I'm free, for a free, this is getting to be a long podcast today, <laughs> for a free mittens um, pattern. So, I found the Stay Put Mini Mitts by Jennifer Alexander. I just grabbed some chinky yarn. They're an old Jiffy brand, which if you recognize the coloration already, these this is the same yarn I used for the holy socks or the holy slippers last week. Um, this is the Jiffy Lion brand and the Pueblo. I had it out because I was planning on trying the socks again and double stranding it. The slippers. Oh my gosh, I'm like stuck on socks today. Um, on the slippers and double stranding it and seeing how that would work and seeing if I would still get holes since I was using a slightly thinner yarn than what was called for. So I just used these. It didn't it didn't take a whole skein of the yarn. Um, it took most of it. I hate Kitchener Stitch by the way, so if you can tell my Kitchener Stitch is pretty wonky. But I um, added a cord to it. Uh, I tried it on him. I think they fit. He kept pulling at them. So I didn't really get a good feel for whether or not they were going to fit him or not. But I put the cord on so that if they... Oh, I had a shadow. <laughs> put the cord on so that if they don't fit exactly right, maybe they'll stay put. I don't know. We'll see. You may not even get to use them if it doesn't really snow. But they were super quick, so I only spent one day on them in between the couple times that he actually really wanted to play. I do kind of like how it pulled a little bit, mainly on this one. See how pretty that looked? So, we'll see if he gets to use them. If he does, maybe I can finally get a picture of him wearing them in the snow. That would be pretty cool, I think. Anyways. So that was my other one. I don't remember. I think I used a size 6 needle. Called for 7s. I used size 6s. Um, and I did use some cheapy DPNs that my husband had bought me when I first started knitting. I think he ordered them off of eBay from some China place. 
so they're not even like shellacked or really or anything, so they constantly splinter. So I wasn't really, I didn't really care, because these, I, I didn't care about this yarn too much. It's just something that someone had given me, I think, at some point in time. But, and then I did a, just a little crochet chain. Yep. I made mittens. So, those are my two finished objects. <clears throat> oh, before I go any further, because this is getting to be a very long podcast, the giveaway that I am doing, which I should have mentioned at the very beginning, because I so forgot, um, is going to be for when our Ravelry group hits 50 members, not including me. So the Ravelry group has to have 51 members. And what you're getting is a personalized hand carved stamp by yours truly in a yarn ball. It's free handed so when I make any more they'll look slightly different but I think it came out pretty awesome. It's nice and small so you know you can make like a little card or something, a little tag for your knitted stuff. What it looks like stamped like that and then I had the bright idea, well let me make a little bit of a smaller one too. So I made a smaller one. Oops, that's upside down I think. Well, whatever way you want to do it. It doesn't matter. And that one looks like, if I can see. Oh, there we go. Like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give away both of them. How I'm going to do it is I'm going to random draw from the 50 members and they will get the bigger stamp. And then that person will get to pick another person from our Ravelry group to get the smaller stamp. So. You want to know someone on the group apparently. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to let that person pick. So, so random generator will be for this stamp from the members and then that person will get to pick another member from the Ravelry group to get this stamp. So, you might want to invite people. You know, just saying. So, once we get 50 members, we'll get a nice little surprise. Okay. Stash enhancements. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm sorry this is so long today. I apparently am blabbering about all kinds of crazy. I'm all kinds of crazy today. Okay. First thing, we got Barnes & Noble gift cards for Christmas from Nate's stepmom. I think it was from his stepmom. It's, it's usually from his stepmom and his dad, but it's technically from his stepmom, I think. Or no, maybe she gave us the other gift cards. But it's from them. So, my purchase with my gift card, I finally decided I got ostentatious crochet. This Jane Austen. Okay. And the main thing from this book that I saw that was a must have because I'm going to make this one day. Look how cool that is. Okay. I love going to Ren Faire. I've been I have one of those, you know, little party city costumes or whatever. How awesome would it be if I could make my own outfit to wear? How cool would that be? Now that's just a shirt. So what I'm thinking is if I can find enough yarn to extend it and make it a whole gown and then find a pattern for some 
are they called? Pet pedophore? Pedi like the little undergarments, the legging undergarment things. I don't even remember what they're called, and I know what they're called. So, so that's my plan. They have a lot of really, really pretty patterns in here. You know, if you like kind of, it's a lot of, you know, kind of more regions, I guess it's regency style, right? I think it's the regency style. That sort of, you know, flair to it that they modernize slightly, but it still looks, you know, you can tell it's, yeah. I don't even know where I'm going with that, but I got this book and it is awesome. And once I get some things, other things done, I will be making something from here. Okay. Other thing. Surprise package came in last week. <laughs> that I was not expecting at all. Now, I told y'all we are hopefully going to be going to Oregon sometime in the near future. Don't know when. Leaving that up to the husband to go see his dad and his stepmom. Well, apparently they came across a yarn store and a quilt store. And they thought that I should have a little sampling from that store. In case I wanted, when we came up, I wanted to go and buy some more. So I got a surprise yarn sample. And I left it in the bag because there's a couple things. Also, they, they sent uh, Linus a really cute thing, too, that I'll be showing you. Because it's just adorable. So, I should have unpacked them. But they were sitting in the kitchen almost all week. Because I hadn't gotten around to picking them up yet. But, so they got me this frog tree. And it's like this nice pretty purple and that looks super blue um, it's like a it's kind of like a deep purple I can't even see what the color is it looks like I don't know. it's not even stamped good but it's 100% alpaca alpaca wool and it's a fingering weight, and it's made in Bolivia. But, uh, almost, almost, getting closer. Still a little more on the blue side, but that's close. It's not, it's not on the blue side at all. It's not a blue-purple. It's more like a purple-purple. So, I got that. I don't need to put it back in the bags, because those are going in my in the closet, in the yarn closet. Another one, they sent me three things. So, that was super, super sweet of them and loved it. Hugo? Scott Seikow? Seikow collection? Uh, uh, I can't pronounce things. It is um, color 08. And it is 80% mohair and 20% wool. And it's kind of like a brownish yellow. If you can see it. Looks kind of cream there, but it's more like brownish yellow tints to it. It's got a little bit of cream, but it's more brown and yellow. I wish I still had my outside light. I should have done this sooner. I got that one. And then for the third one, because they were super nice and bought me yarn and sent yarn to me without me even knowing about it. It is price tags. Um, fiber Natura Natural Fine Hand Knitting Yarns. 
in Seasong, which is made with a kelp fiber. It is 80% cotton and 20% sea sea skull, which is a kelp fiber. And it is in the colorway 40107. <laughs> what when they don't really name the colors? But it's like a that's like super green on there. It's not a deep green at all. It's kind of like a muted greenish brown color. This one actually feels really, really good. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. Pattern suggestions are always wonderful. I do need to, um, if you go and look at my um, stash, I will take some better pictures and you can actually see the real colors of all this stuff because it's not showing up at all because I already look <laughs> it's I want artificial light entirely and I look super washed out and for the wonderful item that they got for Linus at the quilt shop an awesome I think it's king size, a king size pillowcase. So I don't know when he's going to ever use a king size pillow, but might just pick it up for him for a while. So, I mean, we're still putting him in the crib. We haven't gotten him to toddler bed or anything like that yet because we haven't wanted to deal with the constant squirming out. So. That is all the knitting and stuff. So if you so choose and you don't want to hear about any of the other crafts, it's been an hour, <laughs> so I can understand. So, other crafts. Craft one, the hand carved stamping. You saw that earlier. That was a new, new design, I guess, um, that I just kind of just went with. I didn't even sketch anything and transfer it to the rubber. I just went to the rubber and just just played. So that was that. Other thing is the party invitations that I've been working on. i am actually got everything cut out and pretty much glued together separately and now I'm working on putting the whole cards together. But this is what it will basically look like. You see the shiny on the balloons. They are popped up. And Emil has googly eyes. Yeah, they're not shaking. So, and then on the inside, and since this is invitations for Linus and his cousin Finn, the party is brought to you by the letters, it should be F and L, I wrote it backwards, F and L and the numbers 1 and 2, because they will be turning 1 and 2. So, my sister-in-law came up with that. So, so I think that is about all. Join the Ravelry group for a chance to win a hand-carved stamp. And continue watching. I really appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Pattern suggestions. Anything, really. If it's negative... I may just overlook it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Stay safe, stay warm, and hopefully next week I'll have pictures of snow to show you in southwest, southern Louisiana. So, bye, friends.